Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. We are back at Cornish Christmas in historic downtown Grass Valley. I'm Lorraine Jewett. It's a lovely evening here. The weather is perfect. It is Lorraine and I'm Gil Dominguez and joining me once again is Teresa Dietrich and, and Teresa we were just commenting how uh, almost balmy the weather is. It's lovely. We took our overcoats off. I, I'm so excited. Now if you joined us last week we want to thank you for that. Uh, it's so much fun out here every week. Uh, we got to meet a lot of people and, including uh, the Colonel from Beale and I understand you spoke with him today. There was an affair at Beale earlier today, and we went there and visited with all the Beale airmen, and they were thanking Grass Valley and our community for hosting them at the Beale Appreciation Reception last week, and the Colonel Strickland made a point of saying how much he liked your show. Oh, well, that's, that's always nice to know. And then uh, tonight, who do we have? Well, tonight we're focusing on the Cornish Carol Choir, directed by Eleanor Knitzer. We'll be talking to her about the f traditions of the choir, how it was founded, how it led to the twinning between um, here in Nevada County and over there in Cornwall. And then we're talking to the very youngest member of the choir. And that's amazing how they have so many members. And, and really, it's uh, just a short amount of time that they're together. They only uh, practice from October through December. I know, but that's still not enough time for me because I frankly can't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> and we may have to get her a bucket later. Now, <laughs> now, last week we had a lot of fun meeting the people, and I was surprised by how many people it was their first time. Yes, and how many people were from out of town as well. It was it was pretty amazing. Sacramento, Hawthorne, California, we had people. Loomis. Loomis, Isn't that yes. what we want? And, of course, Lake of the Pines, <laughs> all the way at the other end of the county. <laughs> I, we want you know, the locals and the tourists. We need to find someone from Penn Valley tonight. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, so a lot more fun here on your Cornish Christmas show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to tune in each week on the Thursday Night Market. Market YouTube channel and we'll post that up there. It's also on Facebook, on my Facebook, Lorraine's Facebook, and of Teresa's Facebook, and of course at touchdownproductions.com where you can go and click on it and watch all four episodes. We'll be here all four weeks. So come back after the break and join us and we'll go out to uh, the interviews and we'll meet some people right here at the Cornish Christmas 2015 in Grass Valley. We're at SPD Market in Nevada City asking people what they like about SPD. I love SPD Market because I know all the people here and I've been coming here for a long time. I do all my socializing here and they're just a great community supporter. I like SPD Market because it's like coming home and seeing all the people I've known for years. And that's why people love SPD Markets in Nevada City and Grass Valley. Intero Real Estate Services in Grass Valley, Penn Valley, and Lake of the Pines announced their newest location in Nevada City. I would like to thank everybody at the Chamber for welcoming us. We've, we've had a great time putting this thing together. Part of our business plan from day one when we opened in Nevada County two years ago was to open an office here. And so we've now got the four offices that we had planned all along and we couldn't be happier to be here. We welcome them all to Intero Real Estate Services. Guys, welcome to Cornish. Thank you. Is this your first one? Yeah. Yes, it is. Nice. I know. From where? Uh, Sonora, California, by Yosemite. Sonora. Sonora. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but you guys are the Division Five football champions. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Good game. It was. We were at the game last week with uh, the game of the week, and you guys uh, took care of business in the fourth quarter and put it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good game. It was a tough competition. Bear River put up a very good game, yeah. and, of course, they were coming off some injuries. I uh, had three losses coming into the playoffs and still wound up to defend their title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you like the Cornish? I love it. It's really busy. Nice, Christmassy, festive. It is small town living. Small town, I love it. Yeah. And who are your friends here? Uh, my nephews. Hi. And my Hi. Niece. What's your name? Carter. Carter. Cole. Cole. Chloe. What? Chloe. Chloe. You are just as cute as a button. Look at her, all in her scarf and her hat. Oh my God. I know. All bundled up. So you guys driving all the way home tonight? 
Uh, stay in the night, going home tomorrow. Excellent, good idea. Good idea, huh? All right, well listen, thank you for coming to visit us here thank at Cornish you. Christmas, and please come back. Thank you. Well, it's been so much fun wandering around here, so I think we should go see Lorraine, don't you? Yeah, she's uh, back over with the choir. And I think she's going to be uh, interviewing Eleanor Knitzer, the choir director tonight. That's going to be fun. That's going to be lots of fun. <laughs> of the Cornish Carol Choir. And that's not hard to say because it's not that cold tonight. Uh, no, that's thank goodness it's not. Last week was freezing. <laughs> now you perform at the steps behind us every night of uh, Cornish Christmas. That's right. Every Friday night um, from the Thanksgiving weekend until the Friday night before Christmas. We're out here singing carols. Now there's a rich tradition behind this choir. Yes, there is. Um, these carols were brought over from Cornwall and began singing them in Grass Valley in um, 1876 and have been, sing have been sung ever since. Obviously, we're not old, that old, but um, they have been sung continuously in Grass Valley since that. And what's really incredibly important is that of all the Cornish communities, Grass Valley is one is the only one in the United States that has maintained and kept its carols. So that really makes us um, a very special town in the eyes of the Cornish. Now, fol folklore has it that these are choir, uh, choruses or songs that were sung in the mines. Is that true or not? Um, well, they may have hummed, but when we were in Cornwall and visiting the mines, um, you know, I had the idea it was kind of like the um, the dwarfs and the hi ho, hi ho, and we're all singing in the mine. And um, the Cornish miner looked at me and he said, "You couldn't breathe in there, much less sing." He said, "We may have sung on the way home, but he said we didn't really sing in the mine." And and when you go in the mines, you understand that that. It's a lot of dust, and it's dark, and you're by yourself, and you may hum, or you may think them, but um, I'm not sure they were in there singing them. However, um, in 1948, they did go down into the Idaho, Maryland mine and made a recording and um, sang in the, in the mine there. So, and, and that recording lives to this day. What is your relationship with Cornwall? The, the choir has performed there and made visits. It's part of the Twinning Twin Cities. Well, the, the first um, visit that we made, um, we made contact with our Twin City, which is now Bodmin in Cornwall. And Nevada City was already twinned with Penzance, but it was kind of fun to um, be looking around and trying to find a, a Cornish town for Grass Valley because this is Cornish. So um, we, we have twinned with it, but it was after our trip there. Also, after our trip there, um, the first time, the men came back saying, we want a male voice choir like they have because men's choirs over there are just incredible. Every community has one. And so we came back and formed the Grass Valley Male Voice Choir. Um, so that's been going for about 18 years now. And you're the director of that also. Now, how big is this choir, the Cornish Carol Choir, and how much do you get paid per, per performance? Well, um, 
we we just get paid whatever anybody wants to give us, which sometimes means nothing, and other times means you know maybe a hundred dollars. Um, or I was laughing and saying you throw money as you come by, but not really. Um, not, not hard coins. Not hard coins, just dollars, bills. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, the rela- what did you ask me? How many were in the choir? Oh, that's right. Thank you. Um, this choir fluctuates from year to year. It's open to anybody in the community who wants to come be a part of our living history, which is the way we look at this choir. Um, and we only rehearse from October and and November and then start singing. So. Um, you know, we, it's not a huge commitment. Um, the male voice choir is different because we sing in that group all year long. But but this one is just the Cornish carols at Christmas. And we enjoy it every week. Eleanor Knitzer, thanks for being with us. Thanks very much, Lorraine. We appreciate it. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back at Cornish Christmas right after this. Stay with us. And Mary, for Jesus Christ, our Savior, for to me. Welcome to Plaza Tire and Automotive Service in Grass Valley. At Plaza Tire and Automotive Service, the customer comes first. We only do what's right for the customer, not necessarily what's right for business. Third generation family member, learned all that I know from my grandpa Fred, my dad, my uncle Mike, my grandma. My entire family's been a huge part of learning about the automotive industry. Grass Valley is our fourth location, and you can also find this in Colfax, Penn Valley, and Nevada City. I am Blake Hauser, and I welcome you to join us for the grand opening at our Grass Valley location. Join the Penn Valley Area Chamber of Commerce for a new Christmas tradition in Nevada County. It's the Holiday Lights in the Park, December 18th and 19th at Western Gateway Park. This drive through only holiday wonderland captures the spirit of the season with light displays created by local groups. There's still time for you to sign up for your booth. You get to choose the People's Choice Award and the first 50 cars each night receive a free goodie bag. It's the inaugural Holiday Lights in the Park, December 18th and 19th at Western Gateway Park from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in Penn Valley. Be sure to bring the whole family and Merry Christmas from the Penn Valley Area Chamber of Commerce. This is your first time out this year? First time out this year, yeah. All right. Uh, what do you think? I'm having a good time. My daughters are actually selling homemade vanilla extract for their choir trip to Europe. Uh-huh. So they're selling a little bit and doing pretty good. Well, we'll, we'll I believe we'll see you um, next uh, Thursday, the choir performance. You will see us at the choir performance. Uh, up at, at Nevada Union. And my girls are both both going to Europe. So I get the double whammy mm-hmm. on trying to pay for two kids to go to Europe. Well, maybe we should talk to them for a minute and have them hum us a bar. What do you think? I don't know. They're what very they beautiful them? young ladies. My uh-huh. daughter is uh, friends with them from Clear Creek School. Well, go ahead. Hi, you guys. Hi. We understand that you're raising money for your choir trip? Yes. Yeah. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Um, we'll be going to Europe in 2017, and it's a lot of money. So we're trying to gather up money doing like anything we can to so we can go so maybe you could like hum or sing a little bar for us to give us a taste of what we're going to hear next week at the <laughs> choir performance how about it come on a little acapella just hear the sleigh bells jingling ring jing jingling too come on it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you Outside the snow is falling and friends are calling you. That's pretty much like, just like our Ah, very nice. Clap, 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 clap. Thanks for being with us here on the Cornish Christmas Show. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. welcome. And good luck with all your sales. So everybody, uh, if you want to support some wonderful kids going to Europe, come on out here and uh, buy something from the Fate Girls. They're they're really lovely and they totally deserve your support. Thanks. Thanks. Merry Christmas. There's a lot of Christmas events happening in Nevada County, of course, every year. But there's a new tradition being started in Penn Valley. It's called Holiday Lights. And Teresa caught up with Nicole 
who's heading up this event for the Penn Valley Chamber. Let's join them right now. Thanks a lot, Gil. I'm here now with Nicole from the Penn Valley Chamber, and Nicole's last name is difficult for me, so I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. It's Nicole Van Vegas Gagnon. Wow, that's a mouthful. Can you say that like 10 times really fast, Nicole? <laughs> it's a good exercise if you try. <laughs> All right. Um, so tell us a little bit about the first annual or the inaugural holiday lights in the park. I'm so excited about it. Yes, this is something I'm really excited about too. A lot of communities have a holiday lights show where it's open to the public. And the Penn Valley Area Chamber of Commerce thought we could really use something like that here and wanted something that was free and accessible to everyone to come visit and so we thought we have the perfect venue in Penn Valley in Western Gateway Park and so we're inviting people to come on out on December 18th and 19th from 6 to 10 p.m. to see the displays that are put out by nonprofits, local businesses like Livewire, Penn Valley Mini Storage, Eagle Quick Lube is going to be there, the Rodeo Association as you well know is going to be there and thank you so much and we have several other businesses that are participating in some local schools in Penn Valley it should be a lot of fun. It's super easy. It's a drive-through only event. So if you want to bring your kids in pajamas, you are free to do that. Listen to Christmas songs in the car as you see the lights. And you can go through multiple times because it's all free. And then for those who come early, there are 50 goodie bags each night on the Friday night and on the Saturday night too that you can pick up. So can people still get a booth? Is there still time for people to decide, we want to jump in and do this, it's really fun? I would love to have people jump in anytime. So if they sign up by December 9th, they will be listed in the Penn Valley insert that goes out to all of the union and the TWI. And we're printing 400 copies to hand to cars as they come through. So that would be the best choice for the most exposure for a business or a nonprofit organization. But they'll have a sign with their display no matter what, and they can sign up as late as uh, Wednesday, December 16th, if they're still interested in putting up a dis booth. And, and it's super easy because if someone has um, outdoor decorations that they're already using in their yard at home, and it takes just a few minutes to set up, you can come to the park and set that up in the same amount of time. It's super, super easy. We have HBE has been so generous to give a super discounted generator rental, so I'd love to have people still interested contact the Penn Valley Area Chamber of Commerce in order to set up a booth. And is there uh, an application or something online where they can get more information? Yes, they can um, Google us or search us on the Facebook page. They'll find the um, uh, registration and some more information on there. And no one needs to stay with their display from 6 to 10 p.m. So they just come in ahead of time, get it set up. There's going to be chamber volunteers the whole time. The volunteer sheriffs are aware of this and going to be helping. We have someone who's going to be doing overnight security in the park. That's our own Jean Gilligan, the race director for the the daffodil run who's also doing a fun little runner light display there so it, you know it's something that's really easy for people to do they can collect their items Saturday night at the close or they can come back Sunday morning and pick them up before noon so we wanted to make something really easy for display participants and super easy for the public to come out and visit and how about sponsors are you still taking sponsors we would love to have people help sponsor us from their businesses and just give us more opportunities to put up more lights and more displays and more more fun things for the public to share in. Well, it's awesome. We're looking so forward to it. We've made a little commercial for you guys, and it's on our Facebook page, and, and it'll be out and about all over the place. So we at Touchdown are very excited about this event, and we're looking forward to covering part of it. Oh, great. Thank you so much for doing that, Teresa, and thank you to Gil and Touchdown Productions, because we really appreciate the word getting out there. You know, more is merrier in this case, and it's going to grow year after year after year. So thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Time once again to hook up with Lorraine Jewett, and she's over with the choir and the Murphy family. Well, now I'm joined by one of the youngest members of the Cornish Choral Choir. This is Maddie Murphy and her father, Steve Murphy. Maddie, how old are you? Seven. You are seven. Do you have the voice that just carries the choir? Um, yes. Yes, you do. Exactly. You have to have that kind of confidence. How long have you been singing with the choir? This is my third year. What do you like about it? Um, that you get to sing on the steps for um, in the union for people. Do you ever get nervous? No, I don't. What about three years ago when you started? Did you get nervous then? A little. 
Now, did, did your daddy convince you to do this, or did you see your daddy singing and say, Dad, I want to join you? Both. Both? Yeah. Okay. Now, now, Steve, do you mind if I reach across you? Mm -hmm. Okay, Steve, you have a Cornish heritage. Uh, that's right, Lorraine. Uh, so my grandfather came from Cornwall in 1933 and worked the Empire Mine. So he stood on these steps in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s for as long as the choir was uh, uh, singing on the steps. Of course, back then, it was all male choir and the young boys sang the alto and soprano. So I'm really glad that... His great-granddaughter is now singing those same songs from Cornwall. So uh, when we moved up here, I immediately began playing the CD, introducing her to these songs, because I didn't grow up with them for a variety of reasons. So for me, it's about heritage and passing on that Cornish heritage. That's very important to me. What else does it do for Maddie as far as, I mean, performing in front of large crowds? It's got to build self-confidence and make her a strong young woman. It does. Uh, she's already pretty self-confident, as we've heard in her teacher reports, but uh, she will often talk about Grandpa Hollow, even though, of course, she never met him, and he died when I was five, but it, but it, it, it helps a lot. Uh, e even before she was in the choir, she was up here mouthing the words, so that's how long she's known the words, and Eleanor said she can be in the choir so long as she has all the fidgets out. She can stand there and sing, uh, then she could be in the choir, and so it was, that was three years ago, and, and here she is. What, what a wonderful father daughter um, experience together. Now what is your background with the choir? How long have you been with the choir and are there different parts? Yeah, so this is my sixth year and even though I was raised in Sacramento, we came, um, did some training on the East Coast, wanted to come back to this area, reconnect with our Cornish heritage. I give tours at the Empire Mine. Uh, it was the pre uh, immediate past president of the California Cornish Cousins, Cousins so it was very, very important to me. Uh, so sixth year and I sing tenor, so there's four parts and uh, we're, we're situated on the steps according to that group and kind of always has been uh, going back to the 1930s and 40s. Well, actually, my grandfather was singing in the 1930s, but the choir has been singing since 1875. So, yeah. Now, um, aren't you some high-ranking person in the state with some Cornish groups? Uh, well, just the California Cornish Cousins, and that is a group, and we welcome anybody who has an interest in Cornish heritage. My wife is not of Cornish heritage, but we swore her in as a naturalized citizen of Cornwall, of the Cornish Cousins, so anyone can join. And uh, in, in a way, we kind of uh, embrace our own uh, history of migration, leaving Cornwall when things were very difficult, the mines were drying up, people were starving over there, and the world called for people who could mine hard rock for gold. That's what the Cornish did, and that's how we ended up here in on Mill Street in Grass Valley. Otherwise, they'd be in Cornwall speaking English or Cornish right now. So, <laughs> I think we're still speaking English, honey. Um, one last question about being a docent at Empire Mine. What do you do there? So uh, docents, there are, there are many things you can get involved. The community, there's an annual training in March. I give tours mostly, tours of the mine yard and the cottage, and really encourage visitors to come up and, and visit our beautiful area. It, it is lovely. Now, Maddie, so um, what grade are you in? Second. Second grade, do you perform at school? Yes. What do you do? I um, sing in this choir uh -huh. in a um, like performance for um, Christmas. What are your big plans? Are we talking stage, Broadway, movies, television? Um, just at our school and our, our chapel. What about later on when you're an adult? I'm not sure. But do you think performing might be part of your career? Yeah. Because you love it that much? Yes. Okay. Do you have brothers and sisters? I do not. Oh, because I would have asked it, who's the better singer and created some kind of sibling rivalry just for you, Steve. All right. Anything you'd like to add? I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and come up and uh, join the choir, enjoy the choir, come visit Grass Valley in this beautiful area. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's go back now to Teresa and Gil visiting everyone at Cornish Christmas. Just another member of the crowd down here, Dave Humphers, Coach. Uh, welcome to the Cornish Christmas. Thank you. It's wonderful to see so many people out today and uh, uh, in, this, in, the, in the Christmas spirit. And how much fun is that? Uh, walking out with the, walking around with the legendary Coach Gino. Uh, you know, those were some some fabulous years you guys had together. Yeah, we had a great time. Great coaching. A lot of fun. The kids are unbelievable. I miss it. A lot of excitement, and especially, Dave, I know you love uh, the kids running out on the field on a Friday night for the first time and, and hearing the big crowd. Oh, for sure. There's nothing like it. And uh, now, you know, as those young men get older and their, you know, their weddings are coming up and the different periods of time in their life that we're 
we get to enjoy that uh, that also. So uh, those those relationships are lifelong. They are, and so uh, just a real fun running into you here uh, at the Cornish on Mill Street, and just wanted to swing by and say hi and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thanks. Hey, how's it going? Wait, what's the name of the trio here? Uh, the Wandering Musicians. The Wandering? Like wandering around? Yep, like wandering around. All right. Except you're kind of stationary here? Well, yeah. we're moving around from place to place. <laughs> every every Friday night we pick a different spot. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, because uh, somebody else was here last week. I think yeah. it's some oh, yeah. fiddler girls or something or mm -hmm. something like that. Okay, so what's your name? The Wandering Musicians. No, no, your name. Oh, my name? The Grayson Schilling. This is Emmeline Schilling. Hi. Hi. I'm Christy. Hi. Hi, Christy. What's your name? I'm Gil Dominguez. This is the Cornish Christmas TV show. Awesome. And, and we're going to capture some of your music. Oh, sounds good to me. All right. Going on. Yeah, let's talk to the. Where's him? Let Let's talk to the the local constable. Where's your partner? Hey, Larry. Larry, Larry. come on over here. Come on over. Oh, I'm blinded by the light. Yes, you are. The the song lyrics too. Hey, <laughs> you're right. That is. That is. With us is uh, Officer Tassoni, and you know what a great. Um, event this is every year it really is um it's a lot warmer than last week too boy it was really cold out here last week the wind kind of cut right through you tonight Larry. tonight's very nice um not real crowded but a uh, good crowd i noticed that that last week the street was packed uh this week uh, a little bit less dense it is and but it's still nice very festive people are in a good mood that's always good to see and uh, you know that's uh, really nice now, are you getting any comments? Uh, you guys are out here keeping everybody safe. Is that what everybody's liking? Yes, we're getting some very good comments. We're saying thank you for your service. We're getting a lot of kudos, and I think that's very good. Nice. That and donuts and some hot cocoa would be good, too. Donuts. <laughs> no, no, no. The hot cocoa is good, but the donuts, no. Maybe a bagel. Now, you've been coming to these things for a long time. Oh, since I was a little kid, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, how has it changed, or how has it remained the same since you were little? Well, I think what's happened is the weather's changed. It's not as cold as it used to be. And we used to actually get some snow and, and a lot of inclement weather. But um, it's, as far as the, the festivities go, it's great. We used to know everybody a long time ago. But, you know, it's still nice. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's really a good festive time and people are in a good mood. So you Now, know. you had that experience when you were growing up and then later as an adult. Uh, what was the experience like when you were uh, council, when you were mayor? Did it take on a different responsibility or different uh, feeling at that point? No, not really. I mean, it was just, it, it was, you were out here representing the city. It was a little different, but it, it was still good because you still knew a lot of people and it was great and everybody's in a good mood and that's what it's all about. So, you know, it's kind of nice. The city right I still now. represent the city. Uh, right, and now in a completely different capacity. So now you're, you know, uh, out here protecting people and gives you a whole nother layer to look at it really it does and it's it's kind of nice coming up through you know the ranks of all that uh, being in politics and then actually doing this portion of it as well so um, you know it's good good crowd good people good town it is thanks a lot for joining yeah. us here on tonight's yeah. show all right thank you well that's about all the time we have here for week number two of the corners thank you so much for joining us and uh, what a great interview you had with uh, Eleanor Eleanor Knitzer the director of the Cornish 
carol choir sharing with us the background the traditions a lot of information there and was maddie murphy adorable the youngest member of the choir with her dad she's got a big future ahead of her certainly does and uh, that was really fun to run into nicole from the penn valley chamber and they've got a fabulous uh, a light holiday light event coming up the drive through holiday lights uh, December 18th and 19th in Penn Valley. It's going to be fantastic. Our Penn Valley Rodeo Group is putting a display on, and I think we're going to win the People's Choice Award. I'm pretty sure of it. Are they going to have a horse out there? I'm, I'm not telling. It's a secret what we're having. I don't want anybody to upstage us. Maybe some split rail fencing or... Uh, maybe some real life livestock. Yeah. <laughs> Could happen. Could happen. So remember to go out there, holiday lights, 18th and 19th in Penn Valley. And you drive right through. It's going to be so awesome. So uh, thanks a lot to, to them for coming out and joining us here tonight. So be sure to come back next week. Remember, all of our shows are on the Thursday night. Uh, market channel that's our channel that is all the Thursday night market shows all 10 of them from this last year and this will be the second Cornish and of course it's posted on Facebook on Lorraine's and Teresa's and my page and <laughs> Touchdown Productions as well so lots of ways to find us out there and be sure to tune in each week as we bring you the Cornish Christmas from Grass Valley good night everybody good night Merry Christmas